will the triumph be like. The anointed one is king. Let the meadows turn green and exult. Let all the woodland trees cry out for joy. For the word of the Almighty is being addressed to us once more. He opens his mouth, and when he does, an inundating light streams out over us, arraying us all together with light glitter. His light is such that all his holy countenance is covered as though he had put a silver veil over himself. A word what is that word? A word. The word uttered is, I am. The Lord did not let me write it in my way, but took over my hand. The writer says. Then is uttered with imperial grace and majesty, but at the same time with a melancholic sigh. Every creature were they to open their spiritual ear, and hear a king's sigh. They would bend their knee unless they spend themselves on the evil one temples of God Almighty. Here the Lord is addressing his people. He is speaking in the figurative way. I have been examining your walls and I am not pleased for you tend to take my word lightly. I have sent my angel to check my temples and walk around them. I had sent him to review my palaces and what he saw was appalling. Your walls have lost their brilliance and from ivory palaces a worthy dwelling for your king. Your walls now have become a ruin since you have stopped invoking my holy spirit whose translucent streams refresh you, sanctifying my dwelling place. Within your walls, my intention is to fill you with treasures. And what are the treasures? I knew that his word stood for virtues, treasures standing for virtues, and perform marvels within them in order to build up in them the fullness of my self. My benevolent intention was to pour wholeheartedly myself in you and deify you. Do you understand my intentions? I, the Godhead, of not only my church, but of all my creation. I'm longing to give myself to you. My vivifying passage in you will not go by unnoticed. A life giving well will spring up like a fountain within your so pitiable walls. While you will be reviving, you will exclaim with chant and joy. <clears throat> the most gracious and loving God Almighty, whose magnificence is magnified in all His creation, has filled me with the light of resurrection. Blessed be His holy name, my triune God Almighty has shown in me. The bridegroom of all his creation, this goes with Isaiah 54, verse 4, has graciously stepped in me to envelop me with mystical learnings coming straight out of his mouth, inundating my soul with wisdom, light, and her instructions. He came in a majestic glory to mind his people the power of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. This is by the infinite mercy of his heart. Oh yes, all my ways are grace and truth, and from my mouth the truth is proclaimed. Nothing twisted in my words. <clears throat> Nothing false, but in majesty and power they are robed <clears throat> and with nobility as well. Wake up, temple. We are the temple of God, figurative for souls. Why are you asleep? Have, you have your God Almighty in majesty and splendor in front of you, but inviting you. I reign supreme and am in front of you to offer you my 
innumerable treasures. <clears throat> the game will be yours. Look, Don, Don stands for mercy. Has, was, was bound to come. But it appears to me that you have not esteemed my offer. I have not heard either praises for my gracious gesture. You have not matured, generation. If you believe that you have matured, you have not matured in my courts. <clears throat> you have nurtured in other grounds at my hands. Riches not to be numbered, which I pass on without reserve. Yet having received them, many of you altered them. Others exchanged them for a fake imitation. The fake imitation, the Lord <clears throat> explaining how some, after having been converted by his message, for instance, true life and God messages, after their spiritual immaturity have fallen away, following other false messages, taking them for real. An example would be somebody, a prayer group leader of a prayer group I used to attend and might attend again, had for us because of listening to false prophets not knowing that they were false had said to me that Pope John Paul II was the last pope and that Benedict XVI was the anti-pope and I tried to tell her if that were the case then why that, that I mean that's not the case I mean Cardinal Ratzinger had spoken favorably about Basila true life in God he even said publish your answers to the notification of the uh, the uh, your answers to the questions of the notification of 1995. <clears throat> and Cardinal Weissinger himself sent out the books of that notification to all the priests in the country of Italy and asked her to send the books to all the priests and had her put her answers on her website. That's what Cardinal Weissinger said, and he became the Pope. <clears throat> he spoke with, uh, positively about Basula, therefore, who is a true prophet, and so that should say without any doubt that we still have a pope to this day. And the Lord said that he would have Peter guide his church until he returns. So that means even in the Great Tribulation we'll have a true pope. This does not deny that there would be an anti-pope. Yeah, there'll be an anti-pope. But there'll be a true pope. And so that prayer group leader, whose prayer group I used to attend, had thought that John Paul II was the last pope. I helped her to see differently. Well, and I sometimes attend that prayer group. Well, anyway, the same type of thing happens today. People listen to false visionaries and end up going astray. <clears throat> and that's the fake imitation, the false visionaries, swerving from the truth. In the beginning of my noble theme, the noble theme is true life in God, these messages, my Father, the Almighty, with great displeasure, looked at the earth that was in turmoil and said, Fastidious you have become, generation. Fastidious means not easily pleased, quick to find fault. Today I say, you have not matured in me, hardly grown, your branches are snapped off, your fruit is useless, unripe and sour, good for nothing, treachery seduced your folly. Don, which stands for mercy, was with you, but you have taken what is holy lightly. The, fac the fascination of evil throws good things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Has it ever entered your head, evil generation, that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord? Have you ever understood that I called you? Have my Anointed words pass like a fleeting rumor. Has my presence passed like a shadow? It seems that the stolen waters appeal to you and that bread eaten in secret tastes better in your mouths. Foolish generation, this is why your mouths are given freely to evil. <clears throat> now I am expressing my heart once more. <clears throat> Our Lord here reminded me of that day he entered the city of peace, which is Jerusalem, and wept over that city, saying, If you in your turn had only understood that on this day, the message of peace, but alas, is hidden from your eyes. And here a link from Luke nineteen, forty one to forty two, 
As he drew near and came in sight of the city, he shed tears over it. He said, If you, in your turn, had only understood on this day the message of peace, but alas, it is hidden from your eyes. <coughs> Oh, generation, were you to realize only the grace of your times, the grace of my mercy, a grace going beyond the knowledge of man. And although I know of your so wicked intentions and the scorn I would receive from any of you whom I love, with unbounding love, I carry on my intentions, and like a beggar deprived from love, you pass sentence on me. You, the people who persecute his message of true life in God and mock it. Treating me as a criminal champions in perfidy, you rely on your worldly treasures and not on my divine treasure that can bring salvation to you. O oh Lord, is there any good man left, even a single one? <clears throat> that goes with Romans in the book, uh, book of Romans where and in the Psalms, uh, I forgot which Psalm, but in the Psalms where it says, there's not good man left. No, all of them are like open graves. It says, no one is good except God Almighty. And that goes in the Gospel reading where the, the rich young ruler comes to him, Lord, what must I do to inherit eternal life? But God Almighty alone can deify you, bringing you into the path of virtues, deifying you to be the bone of his bone, the flesh of his flesh, and be recognized as his own seed. That goes with Genesis chapter 2, where Adam says of Eve, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She should be called from man, for she was taken from man. That's where woman is. But actually, in our English language, woman comes from womb, man the human being with a womb but is she is the Hebrew word that means from man now my infinite spirit grieves for I do not wish to ban anyone of my eternal presence this link not being in paradise souls who are still in purgatory do not see God, the Almighty, until they complete their purification. Those in hell shall never see God. And although they hate Him, they suffer for this as well. In my great tenderness, I am ready to wipe away your faults for you to humble yourselves, temples of God Almighty, and repent, though I will not pardon the words of a blasphemer. The blasphemy against the Holy and Almighty Spirit. It goes with the long reading here. Then they brought to him a blind and dumb demoniac, and he cured him so that the dumb man could speak and see. All the people were astounded and said, Can this be the Almighty Son of David? David means bubbling and boiling. But when the Pharisees heard this, they said, This man casts out devils only through Beelzebub, the prince of devils. Knowing, that was, knowing what was in their minds, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is heading for ruin. And no town, no household divided against itself can stand. Now Satan casts out Satan. He is divided against himself. So how can his kingdom stand? And if it is through Beelzebub that I cast out devils, through whom do your own experts cast them out? Let them be your judges then. But if it is through the Spirit, the Almighty Spirit of God Almighty, that cast devils out, then know that the kingdom of God Almighty has overtaken you. Or again, how can anyone make his way into a strong man's house and burgle his property unless he has tied up the strong man first? Only then can he burglar his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, every one of men's sins and blasphemies will be forgiven. Listen to this. Every one of men's sins and blasphemies <coughs> will be forgiven. But blasphemy against the Almighty Spirit, 
will not be forgiven. And anyone who says a word against the Almighty Son of Man <coughs> will be forgiven. But let anyone speak against the Holy Spirit, and you will not be forgiven either in this world or in the next. Repent, otherwise, my holy and almighty spirit will never stay in a body that is in debt to sin. Not grieve my holy, almighty spirit. Accusing what comes from God Almighty, calling good evil, that will be fatal for your soul. That is the blasphemy. My infinite spirit is broken of all that I see from above. The wronger cannot hide from my eyes, nor the one who bellows night and day vengeance to his brother out at dead of night. Ah, child of God, let my words echo from you. Tell everyone good or bad. I make my voice be heard from heaven. <clears throat> I shout aloud so everyone hears, good or bad. Yes, indeed, my voice has reached the ends of the world. The good and the bad alike need to repent. The good for not doing exactly my will and for not praying in the right way. When a soul is not humble, the request said in prayer will not be heard. The humbler the soul, the easier does it draw God Almighty's attention to hear it. <clears throat> Many of them approach me only in words. The bad for committing mortal sins because of their hardness of heart and their indifference towards me and my law. Since my temples lie now in disgrace, I, out of my infinite mercy, will continue to pour on this vile generation my almighty spirit to revive it. Then this heredity shall exult and be fertile. Then love intertwined with integrity, the world of the past will be gone. Although I had foreseen that many of you, drunk with spite, reject my prodigies, in the end I will triumph over this wicked generation. If they ask you, but the anointed king has already triumphed. He has conquered the world, for he himself said it. So how will he triumph more? What is the triumph he is talking of? Tell them this, daughter son, child, knowing everything before your creation that this and that this question would be raised by many of you, I tell you once more the words I pronounce to the Father Almighty. Right. <clears throat> Father Almighty, may they be one in us, as you are in me and I am in you, so that the world may believe it was you who sent me John 17, 21. I made your <coughs> name known to them and will continue to make it known so that the love with which you love me may be in them and so that I may be in them. John 17, 26. When I will draw all men to myself into my heart, <coughs> I will be glorified again. I am the new Adam and I am the light of instruction and holy wisdom. When all men, that is the world, will realize and believe that I was sent by the Father Almighty, I will triumph again, for they will say in one voice, This is the anointed King, one of the holy Almighty Trinity, <clears throat> pure light who arrays the souls in his whole creation in his divine light. O Lord and God, by your hand, you have created all things with majesty and splendor, with joy and ripples of laughter. You fashioned everything, filling all things with graces. But the devil in his jealousy deprives us of these graces. He of light. He deprives us of your light <clears throat> until you came Savior and Redeemer to deliver us Lord 
of lords, unction of our soul, light, thrice holy, you deified your divine body on earth through your resurrection, turning it spiritual and incorruptible. You conquered all the material things of the earth. You triumphed over death. You created a revelation, the Holy Bible. For all eternity, lover of mankind, you are the living God, Almighty, who gave us your bride, the church, in which she upholds the truth and keeps it safe. O light, thrice holy, you were made visible in flesh. Show us the Father Almighty. The Father Almighty <clears throat> who is in you, that you and that you are in him. So do not ask generation, what will the triumph be like? The triumph will be when in the end the whole of the creation will come into a transforming union of love with me. And be one, cry out in one voice, unlimited salvation is the anointed king. Eternal salvation is Lord. I am the king. As you have said, child, I am king. As the holy almighty spirit whispered in your ear to declare it. <clears throat> so while you are still in exile, sacrifice more of yourself, remain united to your divine brother. Bear with silence all the ordeals inflicted on you. You are not alone to bear them. I am with you, my dove. Bear them for my sake. I, you are covering many sinners through your trials. Rejoice, for I have given you an abundance of graces to be with me in this way. See, let this be sufficient to replace all your sorrows and sufferings. Let your king now rejoice in you. Come. <clears throat> That's December 31st, 2000. <clears throat> Just looking for December. <clears throat> uh, December 26th and later. Obedience to God comes before obedience to men. I, my Lord, he says, I am. Before you, I stand. Fear not, my child. And this is his presence that was not only glorious and majestic, but it had also all the splendor of his divinity, which made me stagger, she said. Have you not heard that obedience to God Almighty comes before obedience to men? That's in Acts chapter 5, verse 29. What have you done, my child? <clears throat> Although in the previous message, God Almighty <clears throat> made it clear to her that she was not to travel on her own on that very long trip, she was influenced by Father <clears throat> O'Carroll back then, saying that, she could travel by herself and be a friend, and by a friend who said the tickets would be cheaper if I met so-and-so in Indonesia, <clears throat> instead of so-and-so traveling from Switzerland with me, because of this I had consented. In other words, she was going to be with somebody anyway, but not in the entire trip, and that was disobedient. It should be the entire trip, as I said. <clears throat> And so I said, what have you done, my child? When I heard this last sentence, I felt God Almighty's surprise. I felt at the same time that he was shocked, and his reproach was this of a mother who surprised her child in doing something wrong. 
There was no harshness at all. There was no. There was also disappointment and sadness. While he was uttering these few words, he made me understand that he uttered them before. And before he completed the sentence, he gave me a light of perception of where and to whom he had given these words. After the message was completed, I opened <coughs> Genesis chapter 4, verse 10, uh, regarding Cain and Abel. What have you done? I am, I am asked. Listen to the sound of your brother's blood crying out to me from the ground. <clears throat> and read word for word what he, when he had surprised Cain, walking alone in the open country after he had killed his brother Abel. Just by that, I realized how grave my sin was. <clears throat> you belong to me! And although you are nothing, my love will always sustain you. Although you are wretched, my mercy will always bring you to your inheritance. Yes, it will br bring you into my sacred <clears throat> heart. You are worth nothing in front of my glory and before my saints. <clears throat> Here, I was glad to hear these words that everybody reads them, especially those who never cease putting me on a high pedestal saying, Vasula, Vasula, instead of God, God, praise be to God. <clears throat> That's the writer. The writer is named Fasula. Yet when you are in my bosom, you're hidden in me. You're in the one who justifies sinners. That forgives us. And it's in Romans 5, <clears throat> where it talks about justified sinners. What... <clears throat> Then your soul, puny little creature, is considered as justified because of me. This was one of your faults, but however grave your sin was, the sin of disobedience, <clears throat> grace now will be even greater since you have realized what you have done. While writing this, he asked me to add, and not on your own, but by my grace. <clears throat> and this goes again with Romans 5 and 6 was grace now will be even greater since you have realized. That goes with Romans 5. Grace will now be even greater since you have realized what you have done. And you have come to me to ask my forgiveness. Now you're alive again, not by your own power, but by my power. <clears throat> come to me always before you take any decision and consult me. I will always give you good counsel and I will always respond to your needs. Observe my commandment to you and do not grieve me. <clears throat> Remind everyone what the beauty of my infinite spirit brings to mankind. It brings them peace, love, gentleness, kindness, patience, truthfulness, generosity, self-control and mercy, which will lead them into eternal life. The beauty of the Almighty Spirit. <clears throat> you find this in Galatians, where it talks about where the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, etc. And here is, is writing the fruits of the Spirit in the form of saying peace, love, gentleness, kindness, patience, long-suffering. In other words, truthfulness, generosity, self-control, and mercy, which will lead them into eternal life. Never tire my child of working for me. And although your crosses are many, <coughs> do not complain. If you are by far my most tormented messenger of your times, it is because you come from me. And the word that is given to you is true. My word gives evidence that this generation's ways are evil and binding to the underworld. But I will remain with you and my holy, <clears throat> almighty spirit will be your guardian and your lamp, your joy and your strength. <clears throat> he will keep you cheerful since you're hidden in us who are thrice holy. Come to me in complete confidence. Remember, your trials are my glory. <clears throat> the I am that I am is tender and compassionate, slow to anger, most loving. His indignation does not last forever. His resentment exists a short time only. He never treats us and never punishes us as our guilt and our sins deserve. This goes with Psalm 103, verses 8 through 10. God Almighty is love. 
the I am that I am, Yahweh, is tender and compassionate, slow to anger, most loving, 